Hey gang, Diana here today, uh, back in the sandbox with some jelly plates. These uh, plates are really nice. They're uh, like an old-fashioned gelatin printing plate you may have used at some time, uh, but they're permanent and they're super convenient to use. Uh, I'm using them uh, a little different way today. First of all, I have uh, sliced my actual plate up into four pieces. Uh, I just thought it would be more usable to me in this fashion and I am using it on this ginormous stamp press that I bought a few months ago thinking it was a smaller stamp press but actually it's working out really great. I'll link it below and I'm using it with uh, pigment inks instead of paints. I thought uh, that might be a more accessible way to get some quick playtime in. So all I did was inked up the plate with some pigment ink. I'm using, I think I'm using Color Box and Avery L, maybe Memento Lux. It doesn't matter that much, whatever kinds of pigment inks you have on hand. If you have the chalk inks, I imagine that would work really well too. And I did try the dye inks, but uh, they sort of beat it up a little bit uh, more than I wanted them to. So I think the pigment inks are a good solution to uh, instead of acrylic paints. So uh, you can see me here, I am using a selection of stencils uh, from Tim Holtz. I love his uh, layering stencils. And also some uh, wood Tracy, um, no, it's not Tracy, Julie Fife and Balzer's, the Crafters Workshop Balzer Bits. I love her. Bowls are bits. They're just fabulous shapes and very organic feel to them. And I just ink up the plate, lay the stencil on it, stamp, peel the stencil back, and um, stamp again. So it's a simple process. Not a lot of cleanup required afterwards, which um, you know what? I like that. I, I like being able to do these things pretty quickly. Here you see I'm using a hand carved stamp on that. That which you see to the right there is from a hand carved stamp. And then just laying down another balls or bits, printing off, and seeing what did I get. And um, some of the, I'm, I'm just sort of doing overlapping blocks of color. I'll um, wind up trimming this sheet of paper down. Now I am using my favorite paper here, which is the, um, well, I'll link it below because of course I can't think the name of it right now. Oh, it's Stonehenge. It's, uh, <laughs> It's Stonehenge paper. It's a nice heavyweight printmaking paper that I use frequently for uh, book binding. And um, it's just a nice paper. It's got a nice smooth finish. So if you have some watercolor paper or uh, Bristol would work well, uh, anything that's heavy or even cardstock that's a heavyweight cardstock would work well, maybe a hundred pound cardstock. Uh, that will take this nicely. And um, I kind of got excited about seeing the new jelly prints. They just came out with a series of six small shapes. So I'm, I'm looking forward to adding those to my collection. And, um, I, but, I, but I do think that for me personally, Cutting that plate down, I think that a lot of people thought I was nuts, but cutting that plate down was a good decision for me because it's just more usable. They do have uh, a 3 by 5 inch plate. 
Oh, here I'm just taking some paper and a stencil to see, just torn paper and a stencil then on top to see what happens. Um, rubbing around, rub around on the back of it so you get a decent print and, um, you know, not much happened there because most of it was covered, but I do love torn edge stencils. Um, I'm not showing the deli paper, but it's a really great way to clean up your plate in between or stamp off on a deli paper. That's, that paper is so awesome for collaging. Uh, it's so lightweight. There's a piece right there. And um, it's just super to add to your collage box. There's, um, it just, it's, it's translucency is really nice for use with layers. And that's available over at Amazon. I love this flower from, from uh, Julie. I love the way their prints are overlapping and uh, the color changes in them. I just find, I'm finding this to be really a great way to work with the jelly prints. Now, I will tell you that when I've used acrylic paints, I've used the golden open uh, uh, acrylic paint. It's, an, it's a water soluble oil paint. Uh, essentially, and it has an, a longer open time or dry time than your typical acrylic paints. It gives you a little bit more time to work, and that's also why I am enjoying using these pigment inks, because you can work a little bit slower, and um, I, I like that. Uh, I, I think if you Somebody maybe in the comments will verify this, but I, I have read that if you um, put a drop of dishwashing soap into your paints, it will be it will extend the open time. And I've also read that if you uh, add a drop, a little bit of um, you could add some glazing medium to to your paints. I have not done that. I just went with the open acrylic paints because I, I have them in my studio and uh, it gives you a longer open time. But these pigment paints do too. They're not as opaque obviously. You can see that that overlap there and the colors blend rather than hide, uh, hide the underlying colors which I think is a great look. So the nice thing about this stamp press is that it is larger and it allows you to, because of those foam feet, it allows you to wiggle the press down a little bit before you stamp and, and then it's a nice large surface and just rub along the back so that you get a good consistent print. Now there isn't a lot of space because the jelly plate is thicker than your typical stamps. There isn't a whole lot of space between the surface of the jelly plate and the height of the foam feet, if that makes sense. I hope it does. So you won't have to push down as far, in other words. So, But there is some clearance to give you a little wiggle room there. I just, I was, I got this thing and it was like, it's enormous. You can see how big it is. But um, it really is a great tool to use in this way. And I, I think I would recommend a, a press, stamp press this large with the new uh, jelly plates that are, that are out on the market right now.
So don't forget to thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up if you're over here on YouTube and pop over to my blog for lots more pictures and more information. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, leave me comments, questions, samples, ideas. Let's all share some information. I'll probably be back in a couple of days to show you what I did with some of these papers. Uh, click more uh, show more for the supply. Let's see you soon.